Day three of Operation Blessing's response to the Kenya crisis, and we left Nakuru for the worst hit areas of the country. Once thought of as picture book Africa, Kenya's image is being tarnished as it undergoes this horrific tribal conflict. Yesterday in Nakuru, we saw many families that were able to escape with their belongings. But we are delivering aid to those people who have not been fortunate enough to make it to the relative safety of the stadiums and those that have lost everything. As we drove into the bush, signs of violence were everywhere. Villages were abandoned like ghost towns as we passed by hundreds of destroyed houses. We found these children sifting through the ashes of a burnt home. I met a man named Elisha who showed me around some destroyed homes and businesses. They just scare you off by beating you, pangas. There was a guy killed in this plot, in, in, the, in this gate. As we spoke, the owners began to emerge. Yeah, this is my house. Five, five, five children. Five children. This man told us that everything he owned was burnt. All he had left were the clothes on his back. It is people like this that we are assisting. With crops and livelihoods destroyed, food is a priority need for these suffering victims of the crisis. We are working with international aid services of Denmark to deliver tons of food to the victims. Operation Blessing and IAS have committed to serving thousands of people with regular food and relief goods for two months. It's wonderful to see how grateful the recipients are, but there are thought to be 300,000 displaced Kenyans, and there are simply not enough resources to meet the needs. On our way back to Nakuru, we stopped at a hospital in the town of Molo. There I saw with my own eyes the dreaded poisoned arrows that have been taking so many lives. A doctor showed me some of the arrowheads that had been freshly extracted from a victim. The barbed arrows stained in blood were a gruesome reminder of how serious this crisis is. To me, the arrows symbolized the terrible pain that is being driven straight into the heart of this nation. What began as land disputes and political differences has boiled over into cross-tribal hatred. Check back for tomorrow's blog as we enter day four of this mission to help the victims of Kenya's ethnic crisis.